Hello, everybody. This is Taco Movie Talks, Episode 9, and this is the third movie that I am going to be reviewing solo. It is a Fulci Italian horror from the Italian godfather of gore. It was certainly uh, an exciting film going into it. I was very much expecting a lot, I think, because I had seen The Beyond, which is also reviewed on this channel. So um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe and, and check that video out as well. Uh, that is, if I were to recommend any movie so far from Fulci, and I haven't seen many, I think this is only my second film from him, but I would definitely recommend The Beyond um, first. Or if I only had one film to recommend, it would certainly be The Beyond. Um and I'm not, I'm not just only mentioning that film because it's from the same director, but also because it is one of his three gateway to hell films. There's a series, there's City of the Living Dead, and then I think it's House by the Graveyard is the third of those movies, which apparently is lower rated than this one and i think the beyond is the highest rated of the three so shouldn't be much of a surprise there but my criticisms of this and I, what i had thought honestly coming into this was it was a situation where maybe people were put off by the gore factor of fulci but it's not so much that, and I think it's more of the pacing. And a lot of people had said um, that there's so much craziness going on, and I think I just set my expectations way too damn high for this one. And that's, I mean, I mean, that's my fault coming into this. And perhaps if you go to see it after this review, your expectations might be more level to be able to enjoy it. But Overall, it is a good plot, and there is good cinematography, and there is good gore. And the ending is, I guess, not the absolute ending, but the the kind of climax of the film is really, it is good enough to kind of propel it to where it was, it was to, in my mind, it was about to be just above average, and it was able to push it just a, a little bit extra. But again, the good aspects of this are pretty cool. I like the effects they did. A couple effects that were, I think, unique to this film from the Beyond. You you didn't see them in be in the Beyond. There was more variety in the Beyond, which I think is what I liked. But there's like this skull crush, uh, you know, gore type effect that they go for. That is pretty cool. They pull that out. I think three times in the movie. And then there's also a crying blood, which you can see on the screen right now that they pull out a couple times, which is pretty cool and unique. Uh, there was one kind of like lackluster kill where the main antagonist just kind of puts like this disgusting thing on one of the women's mouths and to me, it was lackluster, but it absolutely disgusted my girlfriend. So I guess there is, it is definitely gross. There's a lot of kind of visceral moments in this. And that I, it was one, cause it's like, I would not want whatever the hell was in this priest's hand to go directly in my mouth. And then there was another one where I, th it seemed like they were just using a snowblower to throw maggots into a room, which was very disgusting and visceral as well so it definitely it it did play up the effects to good effect and that is something that really holds this film above water because i think if those weren't pulled off well there is little else to really make this film what it is but uh this one i think starts out real heavy right from the jump we are put right into the mix of it where we have 
a priest hang himself in a graveyard, which that's a pretty heavy way to start any movie and I very much respect the creative direction of that. And then we have a woman basically who is using telepathy, I think would be the correct term for it, to see what is unfolding because the they are trying to, I think, protect the gates of hell and they, they see that this event has opened one. And I, I guess it's such a powerful event that it actually incapacitates the woman enough to where she gets actually buried. We see her uncovered, which was a really cool scene too. Uh, but I think the pacing of it is there's not enough in between these cool effects. We, we have the intrigue of this premise is definitely there. I think that there's, seven gateways to hell on earth that can be opened and that bring people back from the dead is a really cool premise. And we get a little bit more unveiled uh, through the book of Enoch, which is mentioned and that all saints day is a big day for this, for some reason that I am not sure they've, really divulge in this movie and we also find out a different location whereas the beyond is set in louisiana this one is in dunwich which is where they believe the actual descendants of salem are from so there, there's like a really there, there's a lot of very cool elements that if they would have explored more I think it really would have made this film super good where there wouldn't have been any lack of beats going on to like keep you completely locked into this film. So, and the fact that it kind of could have reached deeper into that and, and made it more compelling. I, I think there was a wanting or, or a yearning to explore that in between these scenes that was not done. That was kind of gnawing at me. But the kind of climax of the film, as I said, is really cool where we have them kind of almost in a catacombs as they search for the priest's uh, mausoleum or his actual grave. And then they go into it and there's like a bunch of just de dead decomposing bodies in this, this passageway uh, under the ground. And they're all coming after our two remaining characters. And they almost as though it's Dracula put a stake through the uh, priest to seemingly break whatever spell or incantation has been set by the suicide and uh on that as i mentioned dracula this definitely i think inspires a lot of films and i think it, it pays homage to a lot of films which as a horror buff and and i say that lightly because i i definitely haven't seen nearly as many movies as i would like to have seen in the horror genre but it is definitely one that i love it is cool to see homage paid and it's really cool to see like how ideas are kind of borrowed in different films. Uh, it's definitely something that I like to see. So it was cool to see it in this film, but then we get to the, the very last scene where we have a child, you know, run to the two remaining characters, or I guess I shouldn't say two remaining characters because, um, there is three, including the child, but the child's been separated from a journalist and, you know, someone who has inside knowledge of the Book of Enoch and the Gates of Hell. He's running towards them, and then we hear them scream as if something bad is going on, and then the, the you know, screen fades to black and then kind of cracks. And uh, 
very ambiguous ending. I mean, well, we, we know it's not a good ending, but we're not quite sure what happens. And, and I guess from a perspective, maybe that's to open things up for house by the cemetery, but, um, so I can't hate it from that perspective, but I guess it would have been cool to, to kind of tip your hand a little bit and show us where you're going with it because, you know, it just seemed like logically it didn't make sense considering the zombies all went up in flames from murdering the, the priest. So it was like, well, what is there more, more zombies who were unaffected by that? Like, uh, not quite sure what the explanation was, but, um, you know, just kind of rattling my thoughts around in my brain about this. There are certainly a lot, like there is a lot of, of gore going on, uh, like a lot of, of action is certainly in the last, you know, third of the movie, um, I, I guess it just harkens back to the fact that they could have fleshed a lot more out in this film to make it a more interesting experience, I guess. So that's kind of where I'm at and uh, gave this one three and a half stars and pretty good, pretty good Fulci. I definitely want to watch Zombie 2 or Zombie Flesh Eater by him uh, once that comes to any streaming services that, that I I currently have um or or maybe that's one that I'm going to have to to go out and actively try to find to see it but um I I would recommend this especially for fans of gore just to kind of see cuz he Fulci is is certainly you know the moniker does not go without being deserved that that is for certain um so from that perspective, it's if you are a fan of that, he he executes it very, very well. I guess there's just more to be desired besides that. And they they kind of take steps towards it, but they don't fully commit to where it really could have set in and been good. But uh hey, on the horizon, a lot of cool stuff. There's gonna be a Yosujiro Ozu. Uh, review on Tokyo Twilight, Tokyo Story to be on the lookout for. This is that's going to come out the day after this one drops. So I hope that you will check out me and Ethan's talk about that because I I think it'll be be very good and I think it's a a considered great director that um might be an introduction to some of you or if you do like him, maybe you don't get to hear enough talk about him and that will fulfill that need for you. So I hope you enjoy that. And then also, you know, a lot of uh, really good directors are going to be getting some videos in the very near future. So I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. And I hope you are too. So be sure to like, and subscribe to the channel as I very much appreciate you all doing that. And I will catch you on the flippity floop. Bye y'all.